So uh, without anything further, I would like to um, hand over to Savan and mute yes. myself. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Marion, for the uh, introduction and for the invitation. And um, so basically what's going to happen is uh, I will try to make my uh, slides uh, last 20-25 uh, minutes. And then I think it will be more important to uh, have uh, or to listen to a few um, research software engineers uh, from France. Uh, so in particular, I, I hope uh, Teresa and, and Mathieu will be able to share their uh, experience. I'm going to describe um, uh, the overall structure uh, in France of, uh, for um, RSEs. Uh, of course, what I'm going to say is uh, I think the French system is a good system, but of course it will be good to hear from um, RSC in France because maybe there are a few things that are uh, not perfect. So in my, in my slides, everything will be perfect and shiny, but maybe in practice things are, are slightly different and hopefully Teresa and, and Mathieu will be able to share their experience. And also maybe uh, there is a Thibaut, I think uh, that is around today who, who is in Oxford now, but was in France and he has a good understanding on, of the French system and the UK system. So hopefully we'll have time uh, after my slides uh, to talk about that. So uh, to start with, uh, I'm just going to introduce briefly myself uh, and I will explain the reason why uh, I'm, I'm here today. So uh, my background is uh, I did my PhD uh, at the University of Poitiers in, in France in, in computational fluid dynamics and high performance computing in 2002-2005. And then I stayed for an extra year uh, to wrap up things with my uh, PhD project. And then I moved to, to Imperial College in 2006. I've been a postdoc slash research software engineer for quite some time. And then I managed to secure a, a, a permanent position um, at Imperial College. And this is where I am uh, still now. Um, the reason why I'm, I have a, a strong interest in uh, is because I, I, I heavily rely on research software engineers um, for my research and uh, to secure some funding and, uh, and, and to have PhD students uh, working. So my field of research is, is computational fluid dynamics. So I'm interested in, 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 in turbulent flows. So that can be uh, anything from air, water, gases, uh, anything you want. Uh, and typically we are interested in, in the flow around uh, moving vehicles. So for example, I'm in the aeronautics department, so we are interested in, in, in the flow around the aircraft, uh, around trains, around cars, we are interested in, in, in jets, we are interested in, the, in a lot of uh, flow configuration. And there's two ways of studying uh, uh, turbulent flows. You can do experiments in, in wind tunnel or in water tank, or you can do simulations. Right, and this is what, what I'm doing. And we have a, a set of well-defined equations called the Navier-Stokes uh, equations. Uh, those equations are, are not that complicated, to be honest, but uh, the, the, they have three of their features. So the, the non-linearity, the non-locality, and the non-stationarity make them uh, impossible to solve analytically. So there's no, there's no, it's except for very simplified problem, there's no, uh, solution. So we need to rely on, on modelization and this is what we do. This is computational fluid dynamics. There is a lot of flow solvers that are available on the market and uh, since my time in Poitiers I've been developing a, an open source framework called uh, XCompact 3D. And I, I want to share my, my, uh, my experience with uh, XCompact 3D because uh, I think this you will see why uh, research software engineers are, are, are very important. Um, so th this code was firstly developed, it's an in-house code, it was developed in the early uh, 2000. Uh, it was designed for a vectorized system at the time, uh, it's written in Fortran, uh, it's about 10,000 lines, so it's, it's a small code. 
Um, and then uh, we, we, of course, so for my PhD, it was OK to use this uh, vectorized version. But then we had to move to uh, high performance computing. So we needed to do some major development. And at the time at, in Poitiers, there was no research software engineers. So I started doing the job myself. And I've realized that um, uh, I could do something, but uh, I couldn't do it properly. So. Um, uh, when I moved to Imperial College, uh, we managed to uh, secure uh, some funding via the UK supercomputing facility called Hector at the time. And they have this uh, embedded computational science and engineering projects. At the time, it was with, uh, with NAG, and we managed to secure three projects of one year. So we had three years, uh, and I had uh, uh, one research software engineer working full time uh, with me. And uh, so we managed to, 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 to drastically improve the, the parallelization of, of the code. It can now run on, on 1 million cores. And um, thanks to this uh, ECSC scheme, uh, I managed to, to get uh, another extra four project of one year for, to add new capabilities uh, to, my, to, my, um, to my code. The, the, what you can see here is that every time I want to do something, I need to apply for funding. And, uh, it's very competitive, so I'm, I'm not guaranteed to get the funding. And uh, if I don't get the funding, then, well, I'm stuck. And um, the, the, sadly, the funding is only for one year. So uh, there is no visibility for the research software engineers that are going to work on my project. I can say, well, this is 12 months of funding, but then at the end of the 12 months, maybe we'll get another one, but maybe not. So uh, there is a lot of uncertainty. and. Uh, also of importance for me is the limited sustainability. How do I make sure that my computational uh, solver is up to date? And this is something that is quite challenging. And on top of that, not to mention, there is no support team and there's no customer service. So my code is open source. If you want to use it, you can use it. But of course, uh, you can email me. I will try to, to help you, but uh, uh, I have uh, limited uh, capability. So I think my experience in the UK is that uh, I could have benefit from a, a full-time, uh, fully funded uh, research software engineers, maybe one, maybe two, um, to, to, to work um, on my side and, and, and to, to make sure that uh, the tools that we are using for our research are, are up to date. So hopefully things uh, might change. I mean, Mario mentioned this in her introduction. Um, the UK has launched a new project called Excalibur. And basically this is the answer from the UK government to uh, the transition to exascale computing. They've realized uh, in 2019, so basically probably 10 years after everyone else, that exascale computer is going to be the future. And so uh, they've decided to allocate a, a tiny pot of money. It's 45 uh, million pounds. It's not a lot of money because it's covering everything. Uh, and to be put in perspective with the CNRS budget, you will see that this is a, an insignificant contribution. However, they want to look at um, uh, they want to look at uh, exascale computing. And what we are doing is we we are uh, we did a landscape review recently, and we have identified that there is a big problem with research software engineers uh, in the UK. And this is when we had a meeting with Marion and others involved in the Excalibur project. And I've mentioned that uh, I believe that in France, the, uh, uh, the RSE uh, system is actually uh, very good. And what I will try to describe today is I will try to describe you this uh, research software engineer uh, system in France that is mainly based on uh, what we call the CNRS and what I will call the CNRS. The CNRS is uh, for the French, if, we, if you try to translate in English, is a national center for scientific research. And this is something quite unique in France. And I believe that this is, uh, this is uh, very good for uh, research software engineers. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of good things about the CNRS. There's probably a lot of bad things as well. I will try to touch that. But basically, um, the CNRS, and well, there's a, in France, they still use daily motion. There's a daily motion um, video. Uh, if you want to have a, a small overview of the CNRS. But basically, the, the CNRS is a, a public research organization. So it, it's managed by the Ministry of Higher Education and Research. And um, I will try to, to describe the CNRS and I will try to show you uh, uh, some, share some information about uh, research software engineers. So the budget of the CNRS is uh, 3.3 billion 
uh, euro, which is uh, a quite sizable amount of money. Of course, if you talk to the French uh, uh, people, they will say that uh, uh, it should be uh, uh, much, much bigger. Uh, the CNRS uh, has about uh, 33,000 uh, people um, working for the CNRS, and we will see that uh, they are working in a uh, different research field from biology, chemistry, ecology, humanity, very important, and uh, social science, which is often uh, forgotten in the UK, engineering, of course, mathematics, physics, um, computer science, earth science, and astronomy. And the, the originality of the CNRS is that they are working along uh, uh, the university and uh, engineer schools uh, in France. So very often the, the, the organization uh, uh, system is quite complicated because you have the universities, you have the CNRS people, and you have maybe the engineer school at the same time. So they are all working together. They all have their uh, own rules. And uh, sometimes it might be quite challenging to navigate uh, if you want to do something or if you want to do some research. So the CNRS was created in uh, 1939 between the two world war. Um, the main feature, as I said, uh, it's a fairly sizable budget. I mean, 3.3 million is quite a lot to compare with the UK. The, uh, we have the research council in the UK and the, the budget for the uh, engineer uh, research council is, is much, much smaller than, um, than 3 billion. So most of the funding is coming from uh, public service subsidies. And you also have the possibility if you are working for the CNRS to get your own uh, research contract. You can apply for uh, EU project Horizon 2020. Uh, CNRS researchers are very successful in, in getting funding via the uh, ERC uh, uh, scheme. So that's, that's something that is uh, quite, quite important. There's a lot of flexibility. And more importantly, there's a lot of support when, when you are trying to, to write some, some uh, proposal. Uh, there is there is some uh, some some nice support, and you're more likely to be successful. So the the the, the research in France is based on about one one thousand one hundred laboratories. So within each university, you have uh, different lab laboratories, and they are working alongside uh, the CNRS people. So this is what we call a joint research unit. So in every university, in every lab, you will have uh, people paid by the university and people paid by the CNRS uh, working, uh, working together, okay? There is also now, it's very important, uh, some uh, collaboration with uh, international uh, universities. So it's called International Joint Units. Uh, and this is one way of uh, uh, collaborating with, uh, well, if you are outside France and you want to collaborate with uh, the French university, this is a nice way of getting uh, PhD students and uh, to, to do some, uh, some nice research. Uh, once again, this is just to, uh, uh, to, to sell you the CNRS. The five mission is, of course, to conduct scientific research, uh, but also more importantly, to share knowledge and transfer research results. So there's a strong connection between the CNRS and a lot of industries. There is a lot of uh, also uh, emphasis on, on, uh, on training and also contributing to uh, uh, scientific uh, policy. So usually they, they tend to advertise that uh, CNRS is generating the largest amount of uh, publication in high impact factor journal. Anyway, the, the, it's, a, it's a very successful uh, uh, enterprise, if I may say. Uh, they are also doing some patents and some, some innovative research. So I think this is uh, uh, a very successful, uh, there is a lot of negative thing, but I think this is a very successful uh, scheme for research uh, in France. What I want to, point as well, and I think they are making the point of this, the, the CNRS is a committed employer, so there is a lot of uh, HR uh, commitment uh, from, from the top management uh, at the CNRS. Um, I said that there is uh, 33,000 people, and basically it's split between researchers and engineers, and uh, so it's 15,000 researchers, 14,000 engineers, and uh, 4,000 technicians. So the engineers and, and the technician, we, we say in France that they are, they are uh, supporting, in, in a sense, the researcher, even if I, I, I don't like this uh, like support, but uh, I think they are fully uh, involved in the life 
of, of the laboratories and, and the life of, of universities. And um, the good thing about the CNRS, even if, uh, if you don't speak French, is that you, you can still uh, join the CNRS. There's more than 90 uh, nationalities. So they are quite open-minded in terms of, uh, don't feel that uh, if you are uh, from a different country and you don't speak French, that you have no chance, that's not true. Uh, it's a very competitive, uh, competitive uh, scheme to get in, but uh, it's quite uh, it's quite open-minded. Um, so ah, I forgot to say this is one key thing that is maybe it's obvious for the French, but um, when you are not in France, is that uh, once you join the CNRS, you you join the CNRS um, um, for life, and I think this is something. Uh, uh, this is something quite uh, quite important to mention. Uh, it means that you have the security of a job. So there might be some some other uh, negative aspect, but uh, having uh, the certainty of, of your position is something quite important. And uh, when you are outside France, you realize that actually this is uh, not uh, an obvious uh, thing to have in your in your position. So now if you're wondering if, if, if you're a research software engineer and, and you want to, to work for, for the CNRS, how this is working? Well, the, the, the typical scheme is that every year there is, um, there is an external competition for an open-ended contract. So usually uh, it's in December for researchers and in June for engineers. And basically every year there's a tiny amount of uh, new position that are uh, open to everyone. Everyone can apply. There are some 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 rules, of course, uh, and I think this is one of the negative things: is that there is not a lot of position and there is a lot of applicants. Okay, but every year there is a little there is new positions coming on. Okay, uh, some of them are are, are targeting on a, on a specific topic. So it could be uh, we are looking for uh, uh, research software engineers uh, to work on high performance computing, or in mathematics, or you know in it's, it can be specific. Um, and you also have some fixed term contracts. Uh, so this is when, for example, um, you just got a, a big grant and you need some uh, extra hand in your lab. So you can ask, oh, can we have uh, two years of, of, uh, of uh, research software engineers? But basically the main competition is, and it's a competition release every year. Um, you need to apply sometimes, you need to apply several times. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I, I wanted to show you uh, some, some information about the, the computer science, high performance computing and data stream. So there are different streams depending on the research uh, you are going to be involved to. For uh, engineers, uh, there's two types of uh, engineers. Uh, it's very difficult to do the translation in English, but uh, this is my, my guess that you have the research engineers in scientific computing and you have the design studies engineer in uh, scientific computing. Uh, so one is recruitment at PhD level and the, the salary are, are a bit higher. And the idea is you lead software development and research activities and the design study engineers, it's uh, not at PhD level, it's at uh, MEng or BEng level. The, the salary is a, a little bit less and the definition, this is not from me, this is from the CNRS, is that this is to apply knowledge, expertise, and skills to a particular problem. So I think it's fair to say, but maybe my uh, Teresa or, or Mathieu or Thibault will, uh, will be able to say more about that. I will say that both positions are, are very, are fairly similar. And basically your role, if you are a research software engineer in France, will be fine-tuned by the host institution, okay? so you will discuss with your host institution and, uh, and then you, your, your exact uh, role and what you are going to do will be uh, defined by, by what's going on in, in the lab that, that, you are, um, that you are joining. So I think I'm already uh, at uh, 25 minutes or 20 minutes. So what I want to say here is it was a, a very brief introduction, but or to the sinners, but I want to say that in France, there is a well-defined career path for research software engineers. Okay, and this is something that we do not have uh, in the UK. And the, so the CNRS is, is offering this uh, well-defined and sustainable career path. It's sustainable because you have the certainty of your, of your position and um, it offers a, a great visibility in, in what you want to do. You, you can uh, carry on very long 
uh, a research project. So like I know that uh, software development can take two, three, four years. In the UK, it's you can have one year of funding if you're lucky two years, but then there's no um, sustainability for that. I want to say, I say this already, uh, you have a secure position, it's an open-ended uh, contract, so they are not going to fire you if, you know, like, oh, sorry, uh, in two years you are going to be fired because of whatever reason. And my, my feeling and my experience with research software engineers in France is that they are fully contributing to the research activities in their host institution, I think. So their names will be on papers. They are uh, contributing to, to grants. Uh, they are fully involved in the life. And I think this is something that we do not necessarily have here uh, in the UK. And finally, I mean, I will share my, I will send my slide to Marion, but uh, there is a, it's in English. So that's, that's good. If you want to learn more about the CNRS and uh, what there is a lot of jobs uh, that you can do at the CNRS, and as I said, you don't necessarily to speak French uh, properly to apply. So uh, I would suggest if you are interested or if you want to share this information, then uh, you can have a look at this. Uh, you can have a look at this website. And I think I'm going to stop now because I think it would be much more interesting uh, to listen to. Um, uh, CNRS RSEs that are uh, uh, currently uh, in position and they might be able to uh, share, um, you know, their expertise and um, their experience and how they feel that research software engineers in France, uh, is it that as good as I said, or there are a few, uh, few issues. And I know one issue, of course, is that there are very few uh, positions. And there's a lot of politics involved, and there's a lot of competition. Um, every year, each lab is going to try to get a new research software engineer, and then they fight with each other. So it's very competitive. But my understanding is that once you have a position as a research software engineer, I think this is this is a great position. And I'm I'm, I'm going to stop here. And I don't know how. I mean, we we can ask. Uh, uh, Teresa and, and Mathieu to speak, or we can do some questions. I don't know how you want to do, Mario. Um, I'm fine either way. Maybe we um, do some questions first, and then we um, get the experience part. So does anyone have questions at this point to Sova? I'm waiting a bit because people might uh, type in the chat. No problem. Oh, there's nothing coming up in the chat at the moment, but um, we can do another round of questions otherwise um, afterwards. So, um, yeah, if nobody has questions at this point, um, who wants to give their experience first? Do we have I, th certain... I think uh, uh, Teresa wanted to, to, to talk and then we can maybe ask uh, Mathieu. And I, I know also that uh, Thibault wanted to share his, his view of the UK and the French system. So maybe we can go in that order. So, Teresa. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you. It was a very nice talk, Sylvain. I, I, I think uh, you, you gave a very uh, nice presentation of the CNRS. Um, I, I came here to work for the CNRS because I really admire the institution. Um, I still admire the institution. I'm very happy to work here. Uh, um, I would like to just correct maybe a bit. Uh, uh, you said very well that the CNRS represents the world research activities. Uh, it can be mathematics or humanities or many other research uh, um, sections. And in fact, we don't speak about research software engineers. What uh, we speak, and you presented it very well, was about research engineers or uh, engineer of the student uh, of, uh, studies engineers, very well. yes. uh, the, um, and, and so, uh, in fact, there is a big difference between both positions. Uh, 
uh, research engineers it really needs a, a, a important level of uh, research knowledge um, and you can manage teams um, the student student position is not for management um, this is the big difference and um, usually uh, as you say as, as well the laboratories when they ask the positions obviously they like a research engineer uh, and they usually got the student engineer uh, level uh, but um, uh, one thing that is very good is that there is always every year there are positions um, no many but if, for example in spain uh, this is not possible there are no positions <laughs> At all. So, so I think that is very good here. Um, another thing that I put in the chat is a link. Uh, in um, there is uh, the engineer positions uh, um, are described in BAP branch the activity professional, and the BAP E is for the computer science and there you can see the different levels and the different descriptions of the positions that exist. So when a laboratory asks for a position, they go there, they choose one profile and maybe with a, they can adapt uh, to say I like uh, this or this, uh, but usually uh, they, they use this, this uh, general um, description of a position and then is published by the SNRS uh, and so when you uh, got this position you got the position to go to a laboratory in, in Paris or in Lyon or, or, or other places uh, but you are a SNRS uh, um, person uh, employ uh, the employer is the SNRS and then you can move to other places it's not easy, but it's possible. Uh, I don't know if uh, uh, I think it's more or less what I like uh, to say. Yes, uh, yes, I think it, it's important. As I said, I mean, the, the senior people and they're working in with the university. So when when you get a position, you're assigned to to a, to a specific lab. And um, as soon as after a few years, if for some reason you want to move, you have the, the flexibility to, to move to, a, once again, there's a lot of politics involved, but you have the flexibility to move to, a, to another lab or if you want to join a specific team. It's, it's politics, politics, but it's possible. You are not assigned to a lab for life. You are assigned to the CNRS for, li for life. And then you can also um, have a few examples of people who decided to uh, join industry for, for three years and then come back to the CNRS. So you can suspend your contract with the CNRS to do something else and then join, uh, join, join again. I think there's this, there's a lot of uh, administrative assets, but th that's a possibility and this is happening in, in practice. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I may, the, there was a question uh, in the chat from, um, from Mathieu. Um, I, as, I, I, as I say the chat, I think the, the, the system itself is, is good because you have a well-defined career path. The problem is of course the, the funding. And um, I know for a fact that there's some, in, in engineers, um, there is uh, more position than in uh, pure mathematics, for example. So if you are trying to, if you are a lab and you are trying to get a senior uh, person uh, in pure mathematics or in uh, history of art or things like this, it's extremely, extremely challenging, if not impossible. But as Teresa said, if you look in Spain, for example, there's nothing. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's better than nothing with that respect. But I believe that the system will work very nicely if there was more, more funding and more positions uh, available. I think the system itself is is quite good. Thank you. Um, so, who wanted to speak I think, next? Was it uh, uh, Mathieu uh, from uh, the University of Pau, maybe? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. So nice to meet you. Thanks for thanks for the invitation. Um, yeah. So maybe I can I can start with just presenting myself and, and my my path. So 
I made a so-called engineering school uh, first, so in microelectronics and uh, uh, automatic. Uh, then I was not that happy with what I learned, and so I went back at the university, made a master, and then a PhD in computer science. And then I got a engineer position with a contract, so in France, for a couple of years. Then I went to uh, to Munich, so in, in Germany, where I got a postdoc, which was also an engineering position. And then I got this CNRS position, so then permanent position uh, in Paris when I was back. So it was in 2009, I, no, 2014, if I remember correctly. So now it's five years that I'm, five, six years that I'm in, in, in my position. And then in Paris, so I was really so supporting, so I don't have any problem to say supporting, uh, a researcher in material science, so he had a molecular dynamics code, and it was about really optimizing it, uh, make it making it faster, and porting it to GPU, for example. So it was pretty technical, and then I was doing it myself uh, at the first place. But as you mentioned, uh, I it's also possible to to go to 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 move to to some other activities, more management and trying to get grants and this kind of thing. And uh, so I was involved in a uh, European project uh, called uh, so ECHO, that was a so Euro, uh, energy oriented center of excellence. So that's a, a European uh, project. So I participated to, to, to write it and then it has been accepted. And so I, I was work package leader. So I really managed, uh, I could manage uh, really people uh, all around Europe. So in my position, and then I step uh, back, uh, and then so, and then I decided to move in in Po uh, last year, uh, and uh, here I am again back into some more technical work. Uh, right, so that's so that's the kind of of job you 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 can have uh, about CNR. So you have a it's a very nice presentation, good looking. So it's a very nice advertisement for CNR. So thanks a lot, Silva. <laughs> Um, yes, so so something that you have to understand also that CNRS is very large, but it has very few um, um, units, so pure units with CNRS people. Most CNRS people are disseminated inside universities. They are working really in laboratories that are in universities. So in the numbers, you can think that each researcher has one engineer. It's not true. <laughs> it's, it's not true at all. Uh, you have uh, you have also uh, professors, assistant professors in the in the labs uh, that are at universities, and then you have one engineer, and then you have also one researcher. But definitely, when I had finished my PhD, I had really two paths. So either I go the research way, but it was not possible for me because so I, I had a PhD with doing so in the mix with physics, applied mathematics and computer science. So I went to the mathematicians that were saying, ah, okay, you didn't do the math, so you were doing computer science. And then I went to the the, the computer science, and they, yeah, but all your publications are in mathematics. So you, you are not a researcher in computer science. So I couldn't be become a, a, a researcher. And so I went that way of, of being a, so now I'm research engineer. And, uh, and what to say. And so, so there is a clear difference between the two. Researchers, basically, they have their position so for life, basically, and they can do almost what they want with their position. If they decide, uh, OK, I want to change. So I, this, this new topic is very interesting. I, want, I need to go to this city in this lab to work with that guy. If they can justify, they can just move. Uh, research engineer, as Silva said, it's also uh, about politics, about so research policy. Okay, which activity do the CNRS does the CNRS want to support, and so where they want to make to put an engineer, for example. And so you are attached to a lab and to a uh, to a profile and to to some things to do. Uh, so that's more uh, strict, but it's also as, as uh, Teresa mentioned, it's possible to, to move. So that's exactly what I did. So to go from Paris to Pau, uh, there is a um, um, yeah, procedure. So where each year you have uh, movement, so you have po uh, jobs that are posted. 
and then you can read the, the, the one that you're interested in and then put, uh, candidate. Uh, you can uh, apply for, for that kind of position and then there is a, some board and then yes, of course there are a lot of politics that are involved, but in general it works quite well. And so the last thing is that so far from a, a hierarchical point of view, so my boss is the head of the lab. Uh, I I'm not evaluated on the publication I'm doing. I'm engineer, so I'm not counted like that. I'm evaluated by my boss, so by, by the head of the lab. And so that's completely different procedure. And yes, sometimes sometimes this, this part is complicated in, in some labs because in general, researchers are often uh, not always very good manager. Uh, and to manage this kind of, of uh, this kind of non-researcher guys is is not uh, always easy and uh, they so sometimes there are uh, problems here so i don't have that kind of problem but uh, yes as sylvain said it's i think it's good for research for both research and uh, the people to have permanent positions so the point is having permanent positions so guy that you hire and you know that will be here for a couple of years so you can really build up experience uh, and you have continuity between research activities and you have something that, yes, you, you build a skeleton with that. Uh, thing that is much harder to, to build with only contracts and, and, and so fixed time position. That's what, and basically that's, that's and I'm Thank available you. Time if you have any questions. Thank you. I, yeah. It's good to hear uh, I'm not, obviously I'm not uh, involved. Well, I've tried to join the CNRS and I failed um, two right. times. <laughs> pretty tough, it's pretty tough. Yeah, it's pretty tough, but uh, yeah, it's, if you don't try, you don't, uh, you don't get. Of course. Anyway, thank you. Uh, Welcome. And, uh, I think Thibaut wanted to say a few things as well because uh, he, he knows the CNRS very well and um, is now in Oxford. He knows the UK system as well. Hi. Uh, hi, hi, Sylvain. Thanks, Sylvain, for the presentation. And then Mathieu and Teresa. It's really interesting. Um, thanks for the invitation. Um, yeah, I can. So I, I don't know the CNRS really well, <laughs> first of all, because I, I basically only did my PhD in France and then I, I moved straight away. Um, that was about three years ago. Uh, so I, I did a PhD uh, in Lyon and in computation free, free dynamics as well. Um, and uh, that was very computational. Uh, and so I was basically doing a job. I mean, I'm, I was basically doing RSC work as a PhD student, as many PhD students do. And this is the stuff that I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed actually writing the software um, in order to enable my, my research. And so quite quickly, during my PhD, I realized that I wanted what I wanted to do was to actually become an RSE. I didn't know that the RSE term existed at the time, but this, I had a good idea. Of this is what I wanted to do. So I looked around and I couldn't see much uh, options for me um, as, a, as, a, as, a, I don't know, as a second year PhD student who wants to go into research software engineering. Um, obviously, one option was to try and apply for a position as a research software, as a as a research engineer, an ingénieur de recherche. Uh, so try and entering that competition. Um, but as you all said, the number of positions is, is extremely. Um, there are extremely few positions. Last year, to give you an, to give you an idea, last year uh, there were in terms of software engineering, software development, there were about I think six, seven positions. Um, and and, uh, and then about the same for HPC, and so you and you also have the, this divide between HPC and, and software engineering, which you don't necessarily have in the in the UK. So very few positions. So I could try; it's a lot of work to to apply. And then if you don't have a position, you have to wait another year in order to to apply to select position. And the problem as a as an early career researcher is is now how do you build in in experience as an RSC if, if you cannot have a position and then you have to wait another year. Um, another option is the, the fixed term contracts uh, at the CNS, but um, 
one, I guess one downside of them, of these contracts is that they are often, at least um, what I saw at the time is that they, they are often quite um, specific to one project. And so you, you work on, on one specific problem in, in, in one team um, for maybe typically 18 months. Um, typically, it varies in time. And so if you want to, to, to build an experience as an RC, you have to chain these, um, these, these, these contracts and potentially moving a lot. Uh, and so this is far from ideal. Uh, and and, and the, 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 the chance that you actually are getting a, a permanent position uh, are still very slim. So I looked around and then I found out quite quickly that there was this very interesting dynamics uh, with respect to research software engineering in the UK. Um, where the approach was a bit different. Um, you basically have, uh, instead of having a few number of RECs in, in labs, um, you often you have a whole group within one university. So in one sense, it, it, is, it is more centralized. So you have a, a group of RECs within one university and these RECs are actually working across the university. And what was appealing to me at the time was that I could actually join a group of RECs instead of being the only engineer on, on one team. And so in terms of building experience and, and building a network, uh, it was great and it's still great. Um, so I'm, I mean, I've been, I've been in Oxford for two years now and we have, a, we have a small group. We have about seven people from different backgrounds. Um, we usually share an office, obviously not at the moment, but so we are in the same location. Uh, and so we can share a lot of knowledge between each other. A colleague of mine from biology, I'm from physics, some people from industry, and we're all working on different projects across the university. Some do apps for psychology, I do more scientific computing, um, some do simulations, some do data science. And so I never found a similar like dynamics in, in France. Um, and so now obviously the downside of that is that my contract is, is one year. So it's been renewed every year, but I'm stuck on that one year contract. And so in terms of visibility, it's not great, but there is a lot of interest. And so for instance, now we have enough work to do to sustain about two years of our group. So we know that unless, you know, unless something really bad happens, we have our, our funding um, guaranteed for two years. So it's not that bad obviously it could be much better. Um, so I guess like what I want to say is that um, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bit of a difference in terms of the model uh, between the UK and potentially other countries that inspired, that were inspired from the, the UK model, perhaps Germany, the Netherlands, the US, who took that ROC movement and that, that model from, from them. Um, so you have more of a central RSC group. Um, well, in, in, in France, I think, um, again, my experience is quite limited, but I think that RSCs are more maybe siloed into, into one team uh, and it tends to, to work for that team, maybe do a little bit of training for other researchers, but not that much. I think it's, it's exactly to the point that on, on one side, as uh, Teresa said, she's the only RSC for an uh, AT staff member in France. Right. So, but you, okay, you have the security of the, of the job, but, and on the other side, maybe you're, you're, you can feel you're on your own. Well, it depends, of course, on, on your experience. And it's on the UK, there's a, there's a, a better sense of uh, networking and, and community, I believe. Yeah, in terms of community, it's it's it was it was just very different. Um, I, I could feel the difference from going from France, where I, I guess if you are an established research engineer, you have your community, you have your network. Um, but as an early career RSC, um, it was I, I arrived in, in the UK, and I you know there was the RSC conference, and then uh, yeah, yeah. And then the source, and then I was part of a group that was connected to other groups, and so it was quite quickly in terms of meeting new people and then exchanging knowledge. And so in terms of to, to grow as a, as a, as an, as an early career RSE it was, it was really important for me. Very good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you all. And thank you very much Levan, for your um, talk. That was really, really interesting to see um, how it's working in France actually. And thank you to um, 
everyone who gave their their experience here. Um, I've seen that there was also a lot of discussion going on in the chat simultaneously. And um, thank you for all of you who answered those questions. Um, does anyone have any more questions they want to ask here to any of the speakers or generally or their own experience or so they want to um, add to what has already, already been said here? Terry. Another question. Yeah. Um, so I was just thinking about what you're talking about there in terms of the CNRS. There's very few positions and you might be quite, I mean, there might be very few engineers working in quite large groups. I was just wondering if there's the sort of capacity space or even interest in having a sort of, in having more RSE type roles, which are run by universities and might be, there might be more, it's almost, almost similar to the UK system in terms of having short term contracts. Um, is there even the, the space and capacity and interest within universities having their own RSEs and, and not coming from the CNRS sort of employer? I think it, you, you, if you get a big uh, European grant or even uh, the French equivalent, it's called the INR, um, you, you might be able to fund a few RSC positions, but for a fixed term, and this will be to work on a very specific project. Um, but they will probably not call it uh, RSEs. It will more likely be like a, some sort of a postdoc position type to work on a specific project. Yeah. But be, be, because, I mean, the argument, I guess, of the university is that the, there is this uh, stream of RSEs uh, via the CNRS. So why would they, you know, um, and also there will be the there will be some some discussion around the teaching if you're working for universities you are expecting to do uh, some teachings teaching whereas if you are working for the cnrs you, you are not expecting to do some teaching you can of course do some teaching and be involved in, in teaching activities but um uh yeah th there will the university will expect you to do some teaching and then you will have less time to do your research i mean it's uh it's 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 quite uh, uh, complicating, but I mean there is possibilities, and there are, there are a few RSCs that are funded by uh, by university via research contract. And I, there, there's also something that uh, I, I I just saw on on the on the chat that there is also in France there are some research institutions that are um, uh, well half public half private I would say like uh, Inria or uh, Coria and stuff and. Uh, also, having a, having a job there is almost impossible, but when you get one, uh, it's an absolute amazing uh, opportunity. Because, uh, of course, uh, so you work on very specific topic, but uh, you, you have uh, great resources and there's a sense of community as well. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, I think once again, I think my, my feeling is that it's just a matter of, uh, of uh, funding. If there was, more position, more funding, then I think the, the French system will be good and uh, RSCs will not be on their own in a, in, a, in a big lab. And so there will be a small uh, community feeling. Thank you. Um, are there any more questions? Uh, if uh, if I can complete what uh, Sylvain uh, just yes. said, uh, if, um, there are other institutions. Uh, CNRS is the most important, the oldest, uh, um, and have uh, every research area. Uh, but INRIA, for example, is dedicated to computer science. CEA was for atomic studies, yeah. INSERM is for medical studies, uh, INRAE for agronomics. Uh, there are other kind of national institutions that also publish um, engineer uh, positions and the universities as well do publish uh, every year one call of uh, with engineers and administrative uh, personnel for, for the universities. Thank you. I'm um, just looking through the chat whether there was anything else. 
ask that, but I think you were very good in answering everything straight away. <laughs> um, does anybody have any more questions? If not, I'll just... Um, I have one more question, if that's if we have yes, time. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we talked. Are you talking about the career progression? And it would. There was sort of like that. It's possible to move almost sideways. I was thinking in terms of different projects and different different institutes and and things to do. But what if you just wanted to sort of move up, essentially? Um, so if you are a, a research software engineer in a particular project, and you, I'm just thinking of sort of annual. Would you even get pay rise and like how does that kind of system work? Yes, you you there is a well defined uh, in terms of salary. There is a well defined uh, career pass with uh, milestone and, and so you, you get. I think in one of my slides you, I put the lowest salary and the highest salary. Um, but the, um, as I said, the, it it will depend on your uh, local host institution. If they want to put you in charge of a project, for example, or, you know, there are ways. I think uh, if you don't want to be doing the same thing for all your career, there are ways to, you can move in a different institution, uh, work on a different project, um, take more responsibilities if you want to. Um, there is a little bit of flexibility with that respect. Um, but I think it all depends on where you are and who is your boss and how flexible they are. And once again, it's probably a, a little bit of negotiation. Thank you. 